The Euphrates River is one of the oldest and most significant waterways in the world. It's been a source of sustenance for millions of people for hundreds of years. But in the past couple of months, this once powerful body of water has been slowly drying up. As it does, it's revealed secrets that no one could have seen coming. Something has just emerged under the Euphrates River and the terrifying discovery changes everything. Join us as we explore this strange discovery and how it defies everything we've ever known about the region. The Euphrates River, the longest river in Southwest Asia, holds a remarkable place in history. When it flowed at its perfect capacity, it was a lifeline for the people and civilizations that thrived along its banks. Originating in the highlands of Armenia near Erzurum city, at an elevation of approximately 3,000 meters above sea level, the Euphrates River embarked on its majestic journey. As the Euphrates River made its way downstream, it got a boost from Karasu and Murat rivers. These tributaries joined forces, adding more water to the already mighty flow. And you know what? With every kilometer it traveled, the river didn't just carry water, it carried a whole bunch of history and cultural significance with it. The Euphrates River flowed southeast, carving its way through the landscapes of Syria and Iraq. Along its path, the river created fertile valleys and nourished the land. In ancient times, its valley was a thriving hub of human activity, where great civilizations flourished. The river's abundant waters served as a catalyst for agriculture, enabling the growth of vast crops that sustained communities and allowed civilizations to prosper. On the banks of the Euphrates River were magnificent cities whose remnants can still be seen today. These cities were centers of trade, culture and innovation. The river made it easy for these cities to flourish as it provided a constant source of water for irrigation, allowing the cultivation of vast farmlands. From the ancient city of Ur in Mesopotamia to the iconic ruins of Babylon, the Euphrates River was intertwined with the rise and fall of countless civilizations. Unfortunately, the Euphrates River's current state of decline paints a stark contrast to its past glory. You know what they say, April showers bring May flowers. Well, unfortunately, the Euphrates River hasn't been getting enough of those showers. Low rainfall is one of the main reasons why the river is drying up. In fact, Iraq, which sits along the river's path, is currently facing its worst drought ever, making the situation even worse. On top of all of that, climate change is also playing a role. Rising temperatures caused by climate change lead to reduced water flow. Over the past century, northeastern Syria, where the Euphrates River flows, has experienced hotter temperatures and less rainfall. This not only reduces the amount of water in the river, but also speeds up evaporation, leaving even less water available. The drying Euphrates River is causing a ripple effect on both the natural environment and the people who depend on it. With water becoming scarce, crops are failing, leading to agricultural distress. As a result, around 800 families have been forced to leave their homes in the surrounding villages, and it's not just humans who are affected. The river's ecosystem is suffering too. Many plants and animals that rely on the river for their survival are now left with nothing. Wetlands and marshes, which provide essential habitats for a variety of wildlife, are also at risk due to the dwindling water levels. While nature is playing a part in the drying of the Euphrates River, human activities have made things worse. Poor water management and human interventions have multiplied the problem. For years, various factors like dam construction, water diversions and inefficient irrigation practices have disrupted the natural flow of the river. These activities not only decrease water availability downstream, but also disrupt the delicate balance that the river's ecosystem relies on. When you combine these human actions with the effects of climate change, it's no wonder the situation has escalated the way it has. The Iraqi Minister of Water Resources is sounding the alarm, warning that the Euphrates River could dry up completely by 2040. 
but as this river gets drier and drier, we're also seeing ancient artifacts from the past emerge from its riverbed, and one of them is something that was thought to be lost, the tomb of the legendary hero Gilgamesh. Videos claiming to document the discovery of Gilgamesh's tomb have surfaced all over the internet. People from all corners of the globe are captivated by the possibility of unraveling the mysteries surrounding this mythical figure. The discovery was made in present-day Iraq and holds tremendous significance due to its alignment with the descriptions found in the Epic of Gilgamesh. This ancient epic, one of the earliest known works of literature, recounts the heroic and mythic adventures of Gilgamesh, a legendary king of Uruk. It offers glimpses into the ancient Mesopotamian civilization, their beliefs and their understanding of the world. The discovery of Gilgamesh's tomb, if confirmed, holds immense potential for enhancing our understanding of ancient civilizations. It opens a gateway to a bygone era, shedding light on the customs, rituals and beliefs of the people who lived during that time. The significance of this discovery can't be overstated. If it's actually authenticated, the tomb of Gilgamesh would provide a tangible link to an extraordinary figure from ancient history. Gilgamesh, the legendary hero of Mesopotamian mythology, stands as a monumental figure whose epic tale has captivated audiences for thousands of years. As a demigod, Gilgamesh is described as part god and part human, someone who had extraordinary strength, courage and intelligence. His story begins in the city of Uruk, one of the great urban centers of ancient Mesopotamia. Gilgamesh, as the king of Uruk, had unrivaled power and privileges as a king does, but it's important to use your power wisely or you might lose it. That's exactly what happened to him. His insatiable nature and tyrannical rule led the gods to create a counterpart for him, Enkidu, a wild man who lives harmoniously with nature. The meeting between Gilgamesh and Enkidu sparks a friendship that becomes the heart of the epic. Together, the two go on adventures throughout the kingdom and beyond. One of the most significant adventures undertaken by Gilgamesh and Enkidu is their encounter with Humbaba, the monstrous garden of the Cedar Forest. The Cedar Forest, a sacred and enchanted place, was guarded by Humbaba. His purpose was to protect the forest from any intruders and maintain its sanctity. The forest itself acted as a symbol of divine power and represents the connection between the earthly realm and the realm of the gods. Undeterred by the danger that lay ahead, Gilgamesh and Enkidu set out to confront Humbaba. Their determination and fearlessness for the mission were just a glimpse of how powerful and brave they were. Humbaba, aware of their presence, unleashed his wrath upon them, hurling threats and displaying his formidable strength. However, Gilgamesh and Enkidu remained undeterred by the monster's intimidation. In a climatic battle, Gilgamesh and Enkidu fought Humbaba. Their combined strength, skill and courage enabled them to overcome the monstrous guardian. With each strike, they chipped away at Humbaba's power, displaying their unwavering determination to protect their interests and assert their dominance, eventually defeating him. The slaying of Humbaba not only demonstrated the physical capabilities of Gilgamesh and Enkidu, but also served as a symbolic unifying of both their forces. Even though they were built to be opposites of one another, they were able to come together as one and defeat their enemy. The defeat of Humbaba and the conquest of the Cedar Forest elevated Gilgamesh and Enkidu to the status of legendary heroes. Their victory didn't just boost their reputation, but also paved the way for future encounters with mythical creatures and challenges. It's important to note, though, that their victory over Humbaba has also profound consequences. The act of slaying the guardian of the Cedar Forest disrupted the natural order, and with that brought upon them the wrath of the gods. At this point, the epic took a dramatic turn with the death of Enkidu. Stricken by grief and haunted by the inevitability of mortality, Gilgamesh was propelled into a quest for eternal life. The quest took him to the ends of the earth, where he confronted various trials and met extraordinary beings, including the Scorpion People and the Tavern Keeper, Siduri. 
Siduri saw the pain and inner turmoil that Gilgamesh carried with him, but even then Siduri tried to make him understand the futility of his pursuit of eternal life, reminding him that only the gods possessed such a gift. And Gilgamesh wasn't fully a god. She encouraged him to embrace the beauty and joys of mortal life, urging him to find contentment in the limited time he had on earth. But he didn't listen. After a long and hard journey, Gilgamesh found the home of Utnapishtim, the only person who survived a terrible flood. Utnapishtim was given the gift of living forever by the gods, and Gilgamesh wanted to know how he could do the same. When Gilgamesh met Utnapishtim, he was excited to learn the secret. But instead of giving him the answer, Utnapishtim gave Gilgamesh a challenge. He had to stay awake for six days and seven nights without sleeping, even for a minute. Gilgamesh tried really hard to stay awake, but he was a human after all and couldn't do it. Even though Gilgamesh failed the ultimate challenge, Utnapishtim felt sorry for him. So he gave Gilgamesh a special plant that could make him young again. Gilgamesh was happy and thought about going back to his city, Uruk, harvesting the plant a little at a time to be young forever. But something unexpected happened. While Gilgamesh was taking a bath on his way home, a sneaky snake took the plant from him. Gilgamesh was distraught because he knew he had lost the one thing he had searched for for years and now couldn't live forever anymore. But in all of that, he learned that everyone has to face death because it's part of being human. The epic of Gilgamesh is very important because it is one of the oldest stories that we still have access to today. It was written a long time ago, even before the stories of Homer, in a language called Akkadian, which was spoken in Mesopotamia. We have found many different versions of the story, showing that it was very popular and meant a lot to the people who lived back then. The best version of the story that we have is written on 12 clay tablets. These tablets were found in the library of King Ashurbanipal in the ancient city of Nineveh. But one of the most popular proofs of this story's ancient existence is because of the Gilgamesh Dream Tablet. This is a remarkable 3,600-year-old artifact that was looted during the Gulf War. The tablet embarked on a dramatic journey through different countries, evading detection with forged documents, eventually resurfacing in the United States. It was officially handed back to Iraq at a ceremony in Washington, D.C. This ancient clay tablet contains a portion of the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the oldest works of literature known to mankind. The tablet's recovery adds intrigue to its story. From being unnoticed and covered in dust, it went through various auctions before ending up in the Museum of the Bible, sparking controversy. Legal battles ensued, and in 2019 the tablet was seized and ordered to be returned to Iraq, along with thousands of other looted antiquities. But that was just a glimpse compared to the tomb of Gilgamesh himself. It is still unclear how Gilgamesh eventually passed away, but the most common narrative is that he lived a long life and eventually died of old age. At the time, he had returned to his kingdom in Mesopotamia and was buried under the Euphrates riverbed. How? Well, it is said that the river parted when his funeral was taking place, as if the river wanted to claim Gilgamesh's body. Now that the river is no longer flowing in all its glory, it's as if it's just another piece of land, land that can be dug up. The connection between the historical account and the location of the tomb adds a remarkable layer of authenticity to the archaeological findings. Eager to explore further, archaeologists are setting out to investigate what appears to be a distinct anomaly beneath the ground. The hope is that the examination of this mysterious anomaly will shed light on the rich history and mythology surrounding the legendary king. If the tomb that has been discovered is indeed the final resting place of Gilgamesh, it would have profound implications for our understanding of ancient history and the epic of Gilgamesh itself. Firstly, confirming the tomb as Gilgamesh's final resting place would authenticate the historical existence of Gilgamesh as more than just a legendary figure. It would provide concrete evidence that Gilgamesh was a real historical figure, potentially a king or ruler of an ancient Mesopotamian city. The discovery of Gilgamesh's tomb would rewrite the history books 
as it would push the origins of the Epic of Gilgamesh back to a specific time and place. The epic would gain even greater significance and become an even more invaluable cultural artifact. The tomb itself would offer a wealth of information about the life, customs and beliefs of the time in which Gilgamesh lived. Archaeologists would have to meticulously study the tomb's contents, including any artifacts, inscriptions or funerary rituals associated with Gilgamesh. This would provide invaluable insights into the culture, religion and burial places of ancient Mesopotamia. On top of all that, the discovery of Gilgamesh's tomb would shed light on the historical context and potential political and social structures of the time. It could provide evidence of the power and influence wielded by Gilgamesh, as well as the level of civilization and development of the city in which he ruled. However, it is important to approach such discoveries with caution and thorough investigation. The authenticity of the tomb would need to be carefully verified through archaeological methods, including carbon dating, artifact analysis and historical contextualization. With all of that underway, we're very close to finding out if the tomb is actually of Gilgamesh, and studying it will bring us one step closer to discovering how he actually died. And, as is with most historical findings, we might just stumble on truths that we didn't even think were there in the first place. So, what do you think? Could the tomb really be Gilgamesh's? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and like always, we'll see you in the next one.